it's common knowledge now that SSDs are a worthwhile upgrade for those still using hard drives. But nowadays, people have the option of new fancy NVMe SSDs to replace the traditional SATA SSD. But is this tech a worthwhile upgrade or just a waste of money? Let's find out. For those who don't know, SATA, or Serial Advanced Technology Attachment, is the current standard for storage controllers in modern computers. It was designed to go through an HBA, or Host Bus Adapter, in order to monitor and communicate with the system. The current revision, SATA 3, has a maximum transfer rate of 6 gigabits per second, or about 600 megabytes per second. SATA devices these days almost always run in AHCI mode, or Advanced Host Controller Interface. Common form factors for these devices include the 2.5 inch drive and the M.2 drives, more on that later. Now, SATA SSDs also sometimes come in the MSATA form factor. That's mostly in like laptops, and it's again mostly been replaced by M.2, which more on M.2 in a second. Now, NVMe, or Non Volatile Memory Express, was designed to be much faster to keep up with more modern needs. NVMe devices can operate over PCIe, or Peripheral Component Interconnect Express. There's a lot of acronyms here. The same connection that is shared with other devices, including your graphics card. Now, the current version of PCIe that's most widely used is version 3.0, with the transfer rate of up to 8 gigatransfers per second, which translates to 15.8 gigabytes per second on a full by 16 connection. Now, most NVMe devices only use a by 2 or by 4 connection, with by 16 typically only used for graphics cards, at least on a consumer level. Now, even with a 4X, that's 3.94 gigabytes per second, as opposed to the mere 600 megabytes per second on SATA. Another advantage of PCIe over SATA is that it can connect directly to the CPU itself without needing to go through an HBA. Now, this allows NVMe devices to reach much higher speeds with much lower latency than their SATA counterparts. So TLDR, NVMe is super fast compared to SATA. Typical form factors for these devices include expansion cards, similar to your graphics card, 2.5-inch drives that use a U.2 connector instead of a SATA connector, but the most common is the M.2 form factor. M.2 is a great compact interface for PCIe devices that is found in desktops and laptops, and which supports both NVMe and AHCI modes. Now, because of that, it is important when buying a drive to pay attention to whether you are getting a SATA or an NVMe M.2 SSD, and to ensure that whichever you get is compatible with your system. And once you install an M.2 drive of either variety, it is likely that certain ports or slots on your motherboard may become inactive as they share lanes. Now, for more information on how an M.2 device would work in your system, please consult your motherboard or system manufacturer or manual. Awesome. Now that we know the difference between SATA and NVMe, NVMe is just way, way faster and better, we can get to comparing them head to head in real world use. Now in the SATA corner, we've got an OCZ Tryon 150 480 gig 2.5 inch SSD, rated at max sequential read and write speeds of 550 and 520 megabytes per second respectively. Now this specific drive isn't really sold anymore, I got mine about 2 years ago for 120 bucks, but currently you can find a 2.5 inch SATA SSD for around $70, $80 at most retailers, at the time of writing. Now in the NVMe corner, we've got a Samsung 970 EVO 500 gig M.2 SSD, rated at sequential read and write speeds of up to 3.4 and 2.3 gigabytes per second, respectively. That's about six times faster. Now, I got the 970 Evo for about $120 around Christmas time. Now, that's an amazing deal, considering that I paid the same price for both drives only two years apart, but today it's double the price of its SATA counterparts ish. But it should still be a good deal. I mean, double price for six times the performance? Let's see the real world testing first. But before we begin testing, there's something very important I need to mention. If you are upgrading from a SATA SSD to an NVMe SSD, and you are wanting to clone your existing drive so as to not lose any of your existing data, you'll need to do an extra step 
during the cloning process to ensure that you can benefit from the full speeds. Now, normally, Windows formats your drive using MBR partitions or master boot record. Now, that's fine for smaller drives under two terabytes and for slower SATA drives, but for NVMe, it won't do. You need to use GPT or GUID partition table. Now, this is traditionally only used for larger drives, but it is necessary in this case. Now, I recommend using a software like Minitool Partition Manager to do that. It has a feature specifically built to migrate your primary OS drive to a new device. And before you start, all you need to do is just initialize your disk as GPT and then click Migrate OS and it should work for you. If you are installing Windows from scratch on your NVMe drive, you shouldn't have to worry about this. Now, once you have a GPT device, go into your BIOS settings, go to the boot settings, and switch your boot mode from legacy or legacy plus UEFI to just UEFI. If it was already in UEFI, then you're good. Then set your new drive to the first boot priority. Okie dokie. So now that we know the difference between SATA and NVMe, and we've set up our drives correctly, let's get some actual real world performance numbers already. My first test was a boot test, obviously. I turned on my computer, and as soon as I saw the BIOS boot logo, I started the timer. Once I saw the Windows logon screen, I stopped the timer. Now, the reason I started the timer a little later and not as soon as I pressed the power button is because my computer's a bit special. So for most people, it'll just take one or two seconds to get the BIOS logo. But for me, it usually takes about 24 seconds. Now it's not old or weak machine. I just have a lot going on, like a lot of devices to be initialized and a lot of other stuff going on before the actual booting part. That's an issue that's due to changes that I have made personally to the system. But in any case, to get results that would be much closer to what you would see, I started the timer a bit later. So for boot times, the SATA drive took 8.46 seconds and the NVMe drive took 4.73 seconds. Okay, that's not six times faster, but half the time isn't bad already. My next two tests were launching apps, timed from the moment I clicked on the icon to the moment the first menu loaded. First was Premiere Pro. On SATA, it took 16.09 seconds and NVMe took, wait, what? 15.41? I mean, that's within margin of error, honestly. What's going on? Okay, maybe the next test will be different. Launching CSGO took 33.95 seconds on SATA and 30.69 seconds on NVMe. I mean, what the, I mean, it's a bit better, I guess, but it's still not the three gigabytes per second I was promised. What happened to those three gigabytes per second of sequential, ah, sequential, that's where they get you. A sequential reader, right, is when every block of data is written or read sequentially to the same part of the drive. Every bit is written right next to the previous one. But in reality, blocks of data are never found right next to each other. Different blocks are scattered throughout the drive because most blocks aren't used exclusively for one thing. So in real use, you need to access different parts of the drive to get what you need, a random read. This is obviously much slower. Booting is kind of in the middle. There's some random parts, but some sequential parts. So that's why we see a bit more of a noticeable improvement there than with things like app load times. Now that's not to say NVMe isn't really faster than SATA. It definitely is, but it may be less noticeable than you would hope. Does that mean NVMe is a complete waste of money? Well, again, it depends. If all you really do with your computer is like web browsing or gaming, then SATA will probably do you just fine. There are some cases, however, where NVMe is worth the extra investment. If you work with large files that will be read sequentially, like a 10 gigabyte 4K video file, then NVMe will definitely be faster. If you have external storage devices that exceed SATA speeds, then you may want NVMe so you can avoid bottlenecks on that end. Another benefit of NVMe is the higher bandwidth. Uh, one way this could be useful is all drives have a point where they are doing too much at once. There's too much transfer, or too much activity at once, and that can cause the system's responsiveness to go down. Not necessarily, not necessarily speeds, but responsiveness. Now, SATA SSDs already take way longer to reach this point than a traditional hard drive, but NVMe SSDs will take even longer. So if you're a heavy multitasker, NVMe might be worth it.
But I mean, generally, what I would recommend for any hardware upgrade is if you notice any issues with your or slowdowns with your current hardware, then consider upgrading. But if your current hardware is working just fine, I wouldn't recommend spending your hard earned money on an upgrade. If you're buying a new drive, again, it depends on what you're doing. If you feel like NVMe might be beneficial and you can find a really good deal on one, go for it. Otherwise, for the majority of people, SATA SSDs are probably fine. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed or learned something. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment down below if you have any extra questions or your own experience with SATA versus NVMe, definitely let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Solid State Tweet for the first updates on absolutely everything. Subscribe for more cool videos like this one, and I'll see you guys in the next one.